Hi, this is Mark Wallstrom, and welcome to Speaking of Settlements, a weekly broadcast here on the Legal Broadcast Network. Well, today uh, we have in studio a good friend of ours, uh, Stan Harlan from Summit Settlements, uh, one of the oldest uh, structured settlement firms in the profession. Stan, thank you for joining us today. You bet. Thank you. Stan, uh, as you know, uh, having been at this for uh, so many years, uh, the role of being a general agent in the structured settlement business has been constantly evolving. Uh, in many ways, it's changed uh, rather dramatically from when you started to, uh, to even 15 years ago, uh, the expectations of brokers, the increase of planners. Uh, but before we get into all of that, I'd like you to talk uh, to people a little bit, uh, give them a little bit of uh, history on Summit, uh, talk about how you got into the structured settlement business and how you decided to form Summit Settlements. Well, it was about 34 years ago I did my first case. It was a referral with um, a case that was a million dollar settlement after attorney fees, expenses. Uh, the claimant took a quarter million dollars in cash and we structured uh, a quarter million dollars my very first case and uh, probably within a year, year and a half in keeping track of this individual I found out that the original 250 he took in cash uh, went very quickly. He uh, bought some uh, jet skis and a Corvette and a few other things, loaned some money to friends. So that was my first case and I saw the importance of this product and what it can do to secure a financial future for these individuals that have uh, had some uh, physical injuries. And so about, uh, oh, about a half a year later I decided to do this full time and so I've been doing it now for 35, about 34 years. Uh, Stan, uh, another thing that has changed quite a bit over the years is the fact that when the industry started it was almost exclusively defense brokers. Uh, over time, uh, plaintiff experts and plaintiff brokers came into the business and now there's a healthy mix of plaintiff experts, defense uh, experts, and a lot of people who do work for both. Tell us a little bit about what's going on with uh, Summit. How do you handle that dual role? Uh, you know, how do you handle uh, potential conflicts or issues between your defense and plaintiff brokers? And what's the mix that you currently have there at Summit? Well, without naming individual firms that are competitors, we do know that there are some firms that are so structurally uh, corporate, uh, uh, they just make uh, their brokers be part of committees. They charge their brokers $50 to open up a file, $450 to $500 to close the file. Uh, it's just so uh, much of a corporate world and bureaucracy that the, uh, the brokers just don't uh, care for that. Our model is to hire the uh, independent contractors that have the expertise and, the, and uh, the year's experience to do this work themselves. They usually want to be left alone. They want to be uh, uh, nobody watching over their shoulder as long as they do professional good quality work. We're fine with that. But when they have a question they have a problem that does, uh, develops, they're looking to us to help solve that. And that's one of the unique things with Summit. Uh, we've got a group of brokers that are always willing to take time and help the other brokers with questions and uh, problems. So it's uh, not uncommon to find two or three emails coming into our office each week from a broker that has a specific question, specific problem that he's incurred. Uh, encountered and we funnel that out to the entire group and I'm always amazed at the number of people including you Mark that are able to take the uh, time to develop a, um, a three or four paragraph um, help uh, for this individual. Not only do you offer your personal suggestions but the uh, brokers will give attorney names and attorneys or uh, special needs companies to help solve these problems. So that's a, a unique part of Summit that I didn't really think would be there, but uh, has, has developed into a great, great program for the brokers for the last 20 years or so. You know, Stan, as we go through this, I mean, one of the things we keep talking about is change, uh, the changes uh, that have evolved over the decades in this profession and how Summit has stayed relevant, how they've stayed current, uh, many of the adjustments they've made. Really one of the big changes that uh, we've seen in the industry in the last five to seven years, and particularly in the last three years, has been a increase in the amount of non-qualified or taxable damage business in the structured settlement uh, industry. Uh, tell us a little bit about how taxable damage cases are handled. Uh, you know, does Summit approach them differently? Do they market them differently? Do you have experts and people that you work with in this area? And, and what kind of growth do you see happening in the taxable damage area, Stan? 
We are seeing much more of it. In fact, Mark, you yourself are doing most of your work in this area, so we sometimes will look to you as the expert uh, in some of those uh, cases we work on. But it's getting to be more and more uh, a larger percentage of our business. The unfortunate part is uh, we only have two or three life markets that are truly into the non-qualified business. But we stumbled onto our first case about six years ago. It was a case involving uh, the state of Iowa. It's on public record. A professor at one of the universities uh, sexually harassed one of the uh, uh, staff. And this lady sued the estate. The uh, first award netted her zero. She hired another attorney. The uh, second award, second trial netted $3 million. The state of Iowa appealed again. And about six weeks before the third trial began, we were brought in and based on what we could do with the funds and a non-qualified, putting this, these funds in a tax deferred status, we were able to do more with less and we had that case settled in three weeks to um, the delight of both defense and, uh, and plaintiff. So that was our first experience in um, taxable damages. We did, um, interesting enough, another sexual harassment case for this lady's sister on a totally uh, different uh, related matter and we've done a number of uh, employment disputes. We've had a uh, income disability dispute where a doctor had lost the use of a hand. He was a surgeon. There was dispute and we settled that one also with a non-qualified. It's just ability to put 100% of the money away to earn interest and the taxes are then paid out uh, are paid on those funds when they're received over the years. Stan, one of the things that we've noticed uh, again uh, this whole constant idea of change is that there has been a saturation of the traditional personal injury area as far as marketing and coverage. And by that I mean uh, most of the property casualty companies, most of the major self-insureds have structured settlement companies or brokers or experts they work with. Uh, many of the major trial lawyer groups and trial lawyers around the country have their own uh, experts on the plaintiff side that they work with. But the, the one area that's seen a lot of change, a lot of growth, is the use of qualified settlement funds or 468B uh, settlement trusts. Are you, are you finding that life markets in particular are, are more accepting of the use of multi-claimant 468B cases now than previously, let's say five or you know, particularly 10 years ago when it was a novel concept, uh, now it seems fairly routine. What, what are you seeing from the life market? As long as there are truly multiple claimants, we're fine. Most of the life markets will in fact work with us. The problem has been uh, there's a definition of how many claimants make up a multiple claimant file. For instance, a, uh, a mother and children with the death of the uh, father is, in my opinion, a single claimant unit. However, most of the life insurance companies view that as multiple claimants and at this point they are not willing to structure uh, the settlement through a QSF. A few are and that's really unfortunate. We hope to help educate the life insurance companies more so that we would have more acceptance of that type of case. But the QSF, the Qualified Settlement Fund, has been used uh, by a lot of brokers to on the, the bad side, I guess, to cut a uh, defense broker out. And that's something that we at Summit uh, abhor. We do not tolerate. One of the biggest problems we have with uh, single claimant QSFs is it, be, it does limit the available life markets. And if a broker is accessing uh, a qualified summit fund just to have control of the case, because it's a limited market uh, to that, that specific case, you may lose some competitive advantages from some of the life markets that might have taken it had this settlement just gone the traditional uh, 10482 uh, assignment concept. Stan, another big change and something that all brokers, all planners, and all advisors are running into is the increased amount of compliance uh, that goes on and regulatory scrutiny of what we do. A lot of brokers have dual licensing. Some of them are uh, casualty uh, brokers. Some are, are life only. Some are just annuity. Some are registered reps. Some are registered investment advisors. Uh, with all of the regulation and all the licensing issues that are going on, uh, just talk a little bit about the challenge of compliance and licensing issues that you face. 
Well, I'd say that really goes back to the early 80s before the uh, 130C allowing qualified assignments. Back at that time, the defendants or their casualty insurance, insurance companies purchased and owned the annuities. So a structured settlement broker only had to be licensed in the state in which the uh, purchase was made. After 1983, when 130C allowed qualified assignments and the defense now has the ability to assign their obligations to an, another entity, usually an affiliate of the life insurance company issuing the policy, that means that the broker has to be licensed in the state where the assignment company is. But we take the position that the broker needs to be licensed in the state in which the solicitation is occurring, which means if they are a Tennessee broker but they're going to Montana for mediation, the actual solicitation for the structured summit, an annuity product, means that that broker should in fact maintain a non-resident license in the state of Montana as well. It's not uncommon to find say a family from Ohio that's on vacation in Florida, driving an enterprise rental car that may have a corporate office in California. Uh, they get hit by somebody else driving a budget car and their budget is sliced, uh, registered in uh, New York and the claimant's um, uh, attorney may be in another state. The mediation may be in uh, Georgia the whole thing comes down to what we feel the broker must be licensed in the state of Georgia as well as the state in which the assignment company is that's going to fund the actual annuity. And, and Stan, as we talk about this, I mean, how do you ride herd on that? You know, it's a full-time job, I've got to imagine, for Summit to, uh, you know, keep an eye on all of this. And is the fact that you work with Summit, is that, and that you guys are careful about compliance and the way that you manage these things and the way you stay on top of it, is that a, one of the benefits of being a broker or a planner that's affiliated with Summit? Well, it's hard to police all of that. We insist that the brokers maintain a resident license in the state that they, uh, they live, as well as a non-resident license in every state where the life insurance company has the qualified assignment firms. Where they do their business, it's just a, a common courtesy that they have to us and we have back to them that they are, in fact, doing the appointments. But at any given day, we don't know and don't really have a need to know where the brokers are in mediations. But generally, it's going to come down to uh, we're going to require it if we find out. Well, Stan, last question. Uh, as we've, you know, the, the ongoing uh, issue we've talked about has changed and how Summit has continued to stay relevant over the years. With the influx of new markets, uh, new products, uh, what is Summit doing to increase its offering and to stay relevant uh, you know, with brokers and in the settlement planning community? Well, the days of which we can just offer the traditional structured settlement product and be done with it, those days ended years ago. Uh, we have so many other areas that we need to have expertise in, and if we don't have the expertise, we know where to go for the experts. Uh, Summit has had a strategic alliance developed recently with a national firm that works with special needs trusts, lien resolutions, Medicare issues. So we don't have to know the information. We just have to be able to refer people to the people that have the information. And this firm, like I say, is a national organization that has years and years experience. So that's one of the things that we are excited to bring to our brokers and have our brokers bring to their clients. The other thing is the other types of uh, products. There's so much areas um, involved with the non-qualified market, and Mark, you yourself put on a seminar back in April, and in fact, a lot of uh, brokers from Summit and other firms came, and we learned a lot about some of the other products, so I thank you and applaud you for doing that. And so we've now got working agreements with some of those firms to offer their products to our brokers and from them to their clients. So that's, uh, that's, that's a really exciting part of our firm at this point, and we're gonna add more and more over the next uh, 12 months. Well, Stan, we, I really wanna thank you for coming in and joining us. It's been a pleasure having you here. Uh, obviously, people can learn more about you by simply going to your listing on the Structured Settlement Expert Directory or uh, just checking on the box here on Speaking of Settlements. But if somebody wants to contact you directly, is interested in joining or affiliating with some settlements, uh, could you give me your contact information and how they can reach you? All right, our website is uh, www.summitsettlements.com. Our uh, toll-free line is 866-267-1177. 
My personal email is stan at summitsettlements.com. Uh, direct line is 515-987-6888. Stan, thank you again. Uh, thanks for joining us. This is Mark Wallstrom. You've been watching Speaking of Settlements, a featured presentation of the Legal Broadcast Network. Thanks, and we'll see you again soon.